All right, take three. Is this the final take? I, I hope it's the final take. I, I've had two matches back-to-back -back that were just bad. The one I just ended up in was like, nope, I am not using that. I, I made a dumb move, and I got actually high-centered and stuck-stuck. But I'm going to go over the same thing I went over. The 259A is surprising the utter crap out of me. I've played two, no, three matches in this today. This is the third match. Um, I ended up in a one versus eight scenario. I, I got a mastery badge, a devastator, and in a one versus eight scenario, there are three people left on the enemy team. You can take a guess how that went. To give you an idea, I killed the RU25U. I killed the Yag Tiger. I killed the Waffle Panzer. You know what? Actually, let's take a look at the replay. We're just going to skim past this. I don't want to spend too much time on the replay here, but uh, we're going to skip, skip, skip. I camp right here, and this is going to be a little bit of a demonstration that I do want to show off real fast. So on top of tanks, if you did not know this, um, you have viewports. For instance, right there is the viewport on top of the commander's hatch. Then you have your range finder here to the side of the gun, and then these back viewports, which I honestly have no idea. Then you have your driver viewports up in the front. But to give you an idea, right here I am parked in such a way that if we attach back on the tank and we aim down slightly, you see that the commander's hatch is poking up ever so slightly to scout out any targets that are coming down this direction, which means I'm going to have really awkward moments trying to uh, get that on there. But if for those of you that don't know about the way that hatches work in game. If your hatches are around a corner, you're going to be able to spot a target without much of a problem. Uh, here against the VK4502A, I make a blip of misplay, but I was testing out the armor on this and then I realized he's not upgraded. I'm lobbing premiums. Let's go ahead, rewind this. 30 seconds. It is 5 versus 10. I told the fatherland behind me to follow me if I can find him. There you are. Yeah, this guy, thank you. And here we are putting heat into the side of the E-75. A little bit of a snapshot right before we went around the corner. We're going to pull up. We're going to hit the IS-22. The IS, yeah, 22. I take my time trying to break his engine, but unfortunately no critical hit, no engine damage. But he doesn't have a whole lot of gun depression. So we sat. He <laughs> shoots the turret at the thickest point. And I put a beautiful shell into his side. Currently, it is right now 2 to 9. We're going to fast forward a tad bit. It is 2 to 8 right now. I put one shot inside of the lower war, 155. Here is our buddy. We're going to fast forward. He's dead. It's 1 versus 7. And as you can see, I barely took down the 252U, which was right there. And a TNH 105, which was a one shot as well. Fast forward again. Coming up, I put a high explosive into the um, the lore over there. Loading a heat round, looking at the Yag Tiger. Snapshot into his lower plate. Relocating to the left side here. Hello, Waffle. How are you? And you're going to notice I'm swapping shells, but you can't tell because the replay systems are still broken all these years later. Uh, but boom, E-75 on her side. We're going to pull him again. We're going to take a hit, but whatever. We're going to put a high explosive into his turret. Now the goal is get on the side, get behind, line up. Fast and simple takedown, and me and my big brain wasn't paying attention, and the tiny silhouette of the T-28 came up from behind. If he wasn't there, though, the C-75 was on the 296 hit points, I would have been able to take him down, and then I would have been able to put pressure on Cap, or even find the T-28. Other than that, this is a really fun game to play inside this tank, and I'm super blown away. By the way, the 259A is performing. Anyways, let's put a match inside this thing and just play around a tad bit and talk a little bit today. But maybe not the 259A. I just wanted to show this off a tad bit. I'm actually thinking more of showing off the T44A. Well, T44-100. Ammunition is pain. I'm not taking premium today. Whenever I stream or whenever I'm talking with people, they always ask me if I have a favorite tank in game. And I always tell people I don't. But I have tanks that I always rely on. Thing is, the T44-100, in my eyes, this is actually a really monstrous tank. And definitely worth a pickup if you guys don't have it. Ever since they buffed this and gave it the additional turret armor, because it used to have, I think it was 120 side turrets, and now it's like 190, 180. A massive buff in the side turret. Uh, making it to where, like, rather than 270 heat pen can go through your cheeks, it now takes, like... 
370 or 330, 340 heat pin to be able to go through your side cheeks. Not the gun mantle directly, but on the cheeks of the turret, left and right. It's made this tank a lot better on haul down fighting and city fighting in a lot of brawling situations, which is what this tank is really good at doing. So, let's get into it. But if I, if I was going to say, like, I have a favorite, this would probably end up on that list without much of a problem. Really good gun handling if you got it set up correctly. Hello, snake bite. I'm not going to be able to get a shell neat. What do we have over here on the left? T-34-100. Nice. You know what? That's two, That's a tier 6. I don't know about the other one. Tier 7, T-34-100. Isn't the T-34-100 uh, Chinese? Or is that Russian? I can't remember. And then your 90 armor in the front. You can also come in with um, aggressive angling, which that's a pin. This is a ricochet. There we go. Going to hit his tracks too. A T-34-100 is a little bit scary though. I mean, it's not going to do a lot of damage, but it's just what the tank is. I fear T-34s. I also fear freaking Type 59s as well. I'm going to get two. No, I'm not. I'm going to back off. I'm going to back off. Yep. That's three to one. Hello, Big Top. I'm going to make sure to keep you up. You need to stay up. I need your gun. You know, let's go for tracks. I want to track them. I mean, I got somebody's tracks, but not the one I wanted. Okay, so since they buffed this thing from, uh, what was it, like, uh, 190 base pin, I think 212 now, you can actually reliably go through weak spots now compared to what it was prior. Prior, it was really bad. This is actually pretty nice. Hold on, type 9, he's trying to side scrape. Big top's on point. Agel, how are you? I should load HE. Whoa, that's lag. I thought his engine was broke. I guess not. Uh, good aggressive angling. T3400 still in the back. Me and this big top. Big top putting some big work. Keep it up. I'm going to be pulling off. I'm sorry if you die and I'm gone. But I want to hit this T-34, and I'm going to pull on the backside of that uh, Type 59. And you're on fire, which is a huge advantage. There we go. I don't need to put a second round into you. Big Top, I'm coming. Big Top, I'm coming. I swear, I'm going to help you. Alrighty. Um, let's take a look here. The artillery was out in the field, so I'm going to load high explosive on that. There's the Agel. Might keep the HE loaded, because that's a Banshee. 16 seconds on cap, though. I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything else this match. Not a bad start off, though. No, it's it's kind of weird. I, I complain about the game, and then I, I jump back on. Artie? No? No Artie? No Sky, can Sky Cancer. There it is. Found it. An MVP, nice. T44-100. Three kills, 2,752 damage. A good little bit of a brawling section, but you see, whenever I'm top tier, I feel like I'm bullying people all the time. Like, I I love ending up as middle tier, but I will be honest, I hate being bottom tier at times. It, it depends on what tank I'm in if I'm on bottom tier. Is it wrong that I'm watching the spiffing Brit as I'm playing? I feel like that's a tad bit wrong that I'm watching videos as I'm making a video. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, this match, I kind of think I want to play a little bit more aggressive. If I get taken down, then I'll see you guys in the next one, I guess. But I'm wondering, do I want to go straight to Cap? I don't want to put pressure on Cap. I want to go right next to it, up in the top section up here and fight over the top and then try and hold. They got a Cardavon, T-34 Black. They got a 259, so I do want to be a little bit careful. I am running a camo build, though. I completely forgot that I'm running a camo build. Honestly, with the way I'm playing right now, I should swap my crew out and get my accuracy perks in there. Get that aggressive lineup 
And freebie shot, maybe. No critical hit, nothing, so. I also hate the fact that you can tell if you blind shot someone by it popping up with the XP. They really need to fix that. Remove the ribbon pop up and everything else and put it back with the old way. Because the old way was a thousand times better. This new way is just horrid, in my opinion, whenever it comes down to being able to blind shot people and know exactly when you hit them. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be really super worried about that. That's the same King Dragon. I'm gonna laugh a little bit, maybe. But yeah, um, th that side shot though was pretty nice. 250 right at the side of the turret for last match. You're gonna see the heat shell coming from that Type 59. Because originally that might have gone through before the uh, buff that they put on. And there's no way I can find that buff list because they removed everything. And why did none of their team come up to the top section? This is encounter. So we're going to be putting a lot of cap pressure now since they're not here. Uh, T34 black in mid. He, he was probably trying to go for the sniper play. I don't think he got shots on me. Yeah, he doesn't have any shots on me, so I'm good to pull on. Hello, Snakebite. How are you today? I hope you're doing very well. KV-85 on cap, not actually there. Let's go for engine shots on that uh, T-28. I don't mind that I'm out of ricocheting. I just want to keep him locked down and make him waste a repair kit. Go for tracks if you have if, if you have opportunities to hit the tracks and lock somebody down. That's one of the best things you can do. Where'd that 259A go? Ah, that's my turret. Do you mind? Is that the 259A? Did he get all the way? He did. What the heck? Oh, I made a mistake. And we capped, so it doesn't matter. All right, here we go. Worst possible matchmaking that I can get. See what we can do. Kind of thinking, um, I might go 50 50. One thing I love about the T44 100 is that, uh, your, cam your camouflage is actually that perfect pinpoint 264 still concealment. They do need to bring back the percentage concealment, but don't get me wrong, the meter concealment's pretty nice as well. But the percentage makes a lot more sense because anything past 445 on your uh, base view range is actually considered counter. So, yeah, I kind of wish it would bring back the percentage. Just because that counter was easier to read than um, the 264 whenever it comes down to reading off stats. I think I'm um, APCR velocitying him. I think I gotta give a little bit more lead. Yeah, that, that shot went way right. I think uh, there might be a little bit of a latency issue. Nothing I can do to him unless he backs up. So let's actually force him to back up. There we go. We got one round in the TD uh, 780. Keep head down. T49. Think I'm scouting better than the T49. Uh, but for whatever reason, I can't touch him. Ammo racked. Let's try and aim for that. You stopped, you son of a gun. Ammo rack is... Uh, about right there. Doesn't matter though. Oh, I got hiccups. Too low. Hold on, TVP? Nope. A Centurion might pull out. I might get one shot into him. If he pulls, I don't want to put all my focus on that because you do want to you want to keep uh, your eyes open. If you don't have a shot immediately, start looking around because if you're not looking around, you'll run into a couple of issues. So let's pull pull on the inside and get low, and then fight the light tanks because we're light tank fighters now. 
was that 257? I mean, it doesn't matter. He's a one shot now. Two six eight version five. That's gonna be scary. Not the tank I wanted to hit, but definitely not gonna be complaining. Hello, Sky Cancer. Why are you always picking on me? I swear it's because of my tag. I might drop the decoy tag. All right, T forty nine has got like plot armor on me. Anime plot armor. Yeah, he's got anime plot armor. There's nothing I can do against him. Yeah, that that T-49 has got anime plot armor. I, I am going to say it again. That T-49 had some anime plot armor. There was nothing I could do to him. He was the protagonist that match. He was like the fourth, the last one to go down. I don't know how he won that last match either. I, I, I watched the whole thing and I also went upstairs to go, you know, refill my tea. But, um, yeah, that was pretty cool to watch. <laughs> Or Pershing had a good game. Panzer Jaeger. Yeah, I think they should just really leave in Cold War. Yummy. Yummy. That's nothing but farming. I actually forgot what the thing's heat pin was. Isn't it like 320? I can't remember. I think it, there's a chance it's more than 320. I know it's standards like 264. Ah, uh, we're in another bad lineup. Matchmaking wise, but that's not gonna stop me. I'm gonna go crazy And probably die in like two seconds if I die early in this one I'm just gonna play the 259a for the last match. I I don't Yeah, that it, it's just like ugh, Man Matchmaking though like I don't mind versing tens I just hate it whenever I'm like the only tier 8 in a 10 lobby and then they say that they slowed that down from happening but whenever I play then again, whenever I put a thousand matches a month in, you know, I, I guess I, I feel like I see him more often, but maybe it's like 1% of the time, if that. It's just whenever it happens, you know, it's it's always on your mind because it happened. So that, that could be the problem. It's really just on my mind. I don't know exactly where I can pin the uh, MBTB. And I don't even think I can pin your lower plate. And, and a tortoise, can I pin his under? No. No, no. Um, I have standards. I can pin your hatch, but that's uh, very unlikely to consistently happen. So I'm going to pull off. I'm kind of thinking I might be able to make an aggressive pull into like E5. But that's a really aggressive pull. Oh, uh, do I want to do it? Do I want to do it? Do it. it. It's really early in the game. It's two minutes into the match, and if I pull out like this, I'm just going to look like a nincompoop if I die. It, it's a lot better than having everyone forming a conga line, though, and everyone driving in the same direction. So may, maybe this could work out if I play my cards right and keep these... Yeah, let's. I'm going to keep these TDs in my point of view. I'm going to be within their render range. If I do that, it should work out. So if we get rushed, they can at least cover me. And I should be able to provide them with no no spotting. Because that SU is way too far back. Maybe. I don't know. That actually just might be barely outside their view range. No, that's way outside their view range and render range. Um, I forgot what the render range was. I think it's like 545. It's like 100 meters more than what it's supposed to be. Yeah, two hit points. That's gonna be a good. Is that the? Was that the 114? Hello. Hi. I hope you get shot more. Yeah. That's what you get. You had a perfect roll. That's an E4. Am I safe to pull? I do have a bush between me and him. I have nothing between me and him. I think I got spotted from up on top of the hill or within there. Someone's super camoed out. Yeah, Iron Rain's super camoed out. That's a Conway. I might want to hold fire a tad bit. If I pull again, 
I gotta hold fire. A little bit of fakey right there. It wasn't gonna be a fakey, but I can't make it up it. This bush should work out just fine. Never mind. E4 is going to go low. Is that the Conway? No, it's Iron Rain. Really bad spot, but they got a Panzer Jaeger right there. I want to be real careful. Conway. E4, 907. Um, a bit of a peak. If I had more gun depression, I'd actually HE that tree. That Conway's hurt bad. Yeah, there's their Panzer Jaeger all the way down there. Not 100% on uh, what would be a good play right now. I mean, it, it's 13 to 5. This is just overwhelming. And I'm driving like a Muppet. Yeah, this is pretty much what it looks like whenever you're bottom tier. Anyways, last match. You know, it's, it's not like that's how I feel about tier 10. I don't mind tier 10s based upon the map. Depending on the map is what really gets me. For instance, Westfield right here. If I was bottom tier in Westfield, I would be totally fine with that. But that last map, I can't even remember the name of the map. But that's not a map that I'm super ecstatic about ever I'm really happy about that one that that it tells you how much I like that map based upon the fact that I don't remember its name forgot it well I'll never forget Namanam yeah I'd never forget about Namanam 90% of these maps I always mispronounce them so <laughs> I just <laughs> give them really funky names but Milanovka Westfield all the others, you know, proc, those are the standard maps that have been around forever. It's like, if I get those wrong, there's something wrong with me. Especially proc. Proc Ravka is amazing. Um, Westfield's a really cool map, though. Since they brought it back, I kind of wish they added more foliage on a lot of these maps. And then, what is it? El, 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 El Haloof's amazing. That El Amain or El... Whatever the heck. The, the map that they made small compared to what it was prior, but it's not smaller. It's just rotated ever so slightly. That one can get thrown in a dumpster fire, and I don't think anyone would care. Alright, so angle, approach at an angle. 330. Hawk, I am so sorry. Kind of happy I have 10 high explosives. I've been able to use a couple of them. Ooh. Did they all go up in the top section? I'll be a little bit blown away if they did. Got five spotted up top. Six? Seven? Oh my gosh, I wonder if I can pull this. We only got two heavies right there, though. Alright, no shots in that. Scorpion, ISU 152. Yeah, see, the TDs wanted to come up here, but they weren't able to. I'm going to fire off this AP and then load to HE. So we're going to go AP, ISU, HE, and the SU, which is not needed anymore. Still nice, though. I don't know about you, but that was really good timing on that reload. Sometimes I hate swapping ammunition just because you swap and then you don't get the opportunity. This one worked out really well. Um, you know what? Let's go for a side splash, which is not going to happen. Alright, 10 to 8, and yeah, they all went hill. Try and go for track, so we're gonna fall. Never mind. <laughs> they they stopped missing. 
Alrighty. 13-15. Oh, what do we got? T25AT. That's a guaranteed miss. We can get our lower plate covered up here. But I don't want to do that. We want to pull off to the left side. I want to start heading towards Cap because they're going to be on that here in a second. And that's Commander and Radio. Let's get that radio back in ASAP. T25 or T. KV5. That KV5. Is that still 180 on that hatch in the front? Or 190? I know I got enough pin, but I got to hit it uh, flush. I got to make sure it's a flat on shot. Egg Tiger 88. They did buff the pin on that. What is it now? 238 standard? Stone Cold. That's a little scary. KV5 is not as scary as a Stone Cold is. And we got something with a big gun. Engine damage. And me going downy. Couple of mistakes. I got a Borask though, so I really want to be careful. I got a ghost of freaking battlefield. Yep, two. Hard pull. We do get a little bit of space armor if he's firing heat. The KV-5 might be pulling on me here in a second. Borask is back on cap. He fired one. We got two into him. Stone Cold. He is out of ammo, and I'm ramming the wall. Mm, please bounce. Thank you. Stone Cold's loaded now, but he is in trouble. All right, that's good. Good thing that I came back whenever I did. Apply a little bit of pressure. But we have AT-15 left. What do we have over there? Is that the Jackal? That might be the Jackal. What's that medium? No, that's the Jackal. So the Centurion is on that AT-15. Oh yeah, that Centurion's struggling a tad bit. Then again, that Centurion's on five kills right now. He's putting in some work. He's getting rushed by the AT-15. That's a 32-pounder on that, right? 94 millimeter. So we got Centurion, AT-15. I would like to apply some pressure on the rear of that. Let him know I'm here. I lost him. We got him, though. Centurion, you're alive. <laughs> you're happy. <laughs> I actually really wonder how I got MVP and he got five kills compared to my one. Then again, I did do a lot of damage and a lot of it was within my render range plus a thousand assist. Uh, Confederate. I actually forgot what Confederate was. Damage at least six enemy vehicles that are um, simply destroyed by another player or destroyed themselves. Okay, so I shot a lot of stuff. Shot the KV-5, Stone Cold, AT-15, the Borask, T-25, AT, the Lore, ISU, SU-130PM, the Hawk, Scorpion. I did shoot a lot of things. Oh my goodness. Alright. I have a question for everyone. These personal offers are becoming really egregious. I'm getting sick of seeing them pop up like this. Because imagine that you're like pressing A to skip, 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 skip. And then all of a sudden it's like this one pops up and you're like, oh, hold on. Actually, I want to test this. Is it a one-time click? Okay, it takes you to the store. All right, that's good to see. If it was like a one-time click and you bought it, I would have been really upset. Um, anyways, you guys, yeah, T44. This is a very solid tank in my opinion. Um, it's one of my go-tos whenever I'm not, you know, <laughs> really having a blast on the day or anything really crazy. I don't, I don't know what to say about it. I just find it to be one of my go-to tanks. It just, it's an all-round really good tank. It's 
good at brawling, spotting, sniping. It's kind of an all-rounder, except for, you know, T-49 plot armor. And, um, yeah, 212 standard. It used to be 190, so that 22mm uh, buff up was really nice to see. Not to mention, its terrain resistance is amazing, and just, it's all-around mobility. T-44-100, guys, it's one of my favorites, but not my main favorite. I don't really have a main favorite. Anyways, till, till next time, I'm done slacking off. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. I found out who gave me that tank, but he said not to worry about it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Anyways, till next time, you guys have a great day after night. I'm out of here.